Good night, everyone. Welcome once again to Words of Pearls. My name is Florencia Changajita, and on my YouTube channel, I am Flo, F-L-O, Changajita. Now, I want to talk to you tonight. I have entitled this section, Who's Your Worst Enemy? Have you ever heard the quote, if there's no enemy within, the enemy outside can do us no harm? You ever thought about how sometimes you can self-sabotage or, you know, just your mind can play tricks on you so that you sabotage yourself, you, you know, uh, become accusatory to others when uh, it's, it's like things within yourself, you know, like how we can think, ponder, think on the negative so long that it becomes, it, it influences our speech and our actions as well. Sometimes the enemy within is family, you know, so it can be your own mind or it can be family. You know, it's really sad when you have parents who will sabotage children or children who will sabotage parents because it, it works both ways. I know when I was growing up, it was said that, you know, parents depended on their children to, you know, parents take care of their children when they're young. And then later on, they expect their children to take care of them. However, um, migrating to the US, uh, you know, you see and hear where there are parents who are jealous of their children, and so they'll sabotage them. You'll also have children who are jealous of their parents, which doesn't make sense because if your parents are successful, uh, usually that legacy, you know, most often or not, will filter down. But unfortunately, we live in such a time when, you know, you have family members who can be rather mean, you know, um, Sometimes it's friends, people who you thought were friends, but they weren't really friends. You know, uh, someone was telling me about a, a video of a, a, a person who, interestingly, uh, they were friends, and uh, I guess they used to steal or uh, shoplift together. And then, um, you know, they struggled and, and the person stopped doing that and got themselves, you know, some kind of degree to become a home health aid attendant. So to, to earn legitimate cash. And, um, and then uh, the person recently, I, I don't know well, no, recent it is that they sent them, they went to Jamaica and they asked them to bring back some uh, Lasco, whatever that is. And um, I don't know if any of you guys have seen or heard of that. And now the person is in jail um, because it was drugs that they were asked to carry. Now, I don't know what the validity of it is. I don't know if the person didn't know. The thing is, sometimes with friends and family, and there are times, uh, I know uh, my husband has watched this show where you see where friends have set up their friend. Well, quote unquote, they're not really friends. I've set up their friends you know, to to take a trip. Hey, you get a free trip. Just like when you're coming back, can you bring me this? Can you do this? Sometimes they also know that they're actually bringing back drugs, but figuring they won't get caught, right? Sometimes they don't know until they are caught and arrested and imprisoned in foreign countries. And so, you know, there is that. But the thing is... <laughs> It's, it's sad that you sometimes don't know who you can trust. But I know when you trust God, he will allow you to know who you can trust and who you can't trust. And he'll give you that discerning spirit to know when something's off, when not to do something, you know. Um, so as I said before, you know, sometimes it's one's mind that can be your own enemy because you think about it the flesh likes for us to do things 
that are not um, um, beneficial. You know, uh, I have to mention Jessica in this. <laughs> Jessica sent me a, a, I think it was, I think it was Jessica who sent me this uh, video with where it says, uh, this is how the person in the video said, this is how they feel. And they had like the strangers of face, but that's how they felt when they realized um, that the flesh doesn't care about um, not sinning, basically, or it doesn't care about eternity because it knows it's not going there. So of course, it's not going to encourage any of us to do what is right and pleasing in the eyes of the Lord. And I thought, you know, one, it was hilarious, but man, is that true? That is ever so true because the flesh that we're in now will not be the flesh that will be entering into eternity. And so if it has no uh, gain for the flesh to make it to that place, you think about it, you know, if someone thinks that, wait a minute, I'm not benefiting in this, and I'm not benefiting in what you're doing, then I have no reason to participate in that or then they'll sabotage. So that's why the flesh will self-sabotage every and any chance it gets. So can't really lean too much on the flesh, right? You have to know that the flesh will set you up. And then as for the parents and the family members and children, children who are jealous of the parents or parents who are jealous of the children, you know, that's just unfortunate, sad, and a little bit demonic, if you know, to be truthful, because how do you, um, as a parent who has given birth to a child, how do you, why would you become jealous of your child? Because children are supposed to be the legacy they're supposed to be achieve more become better take what the parent have given them and run with it and become better and all parents should i believe want to see their children become better better than they uh there are you know we've known of whole families that worked on and some folks have folks in their families who have worked on plantations. Some folks have cleaned houses. They've been um, um, domestic helpers, um, nannies, you know, doing jobs that one would consider to be demeaning, but they've done it just so their children can get a better education. They've done it so that their children can have a better chance at life than they had. Uh, many have worked hard bought houses, bought stocks, done what they could in order for their children to have a better life than they did. So the thing is, um, you know, it's, 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 it, it just goes against the grain when a parent would sabotage their child or, or do something to harm their child. It goes against the grain. Also for children who are, although my mom, <laughs> I remember her saying this quote, um, you know, there were, she'd share stories about things. And um, yeah, my mom, uh, she went, my mom migrated here at first. She went to Colorado and she took care of some kids. Uh, yeah, she was a living nanny. So <laughs> I understand. And something my mom had shared, uh, it wasn't about that family. The family that she worked for, um, she totally, um, the kids, she loved them and the family that were good to her. But um, there was another family that she, she you, you know, that when, when you migrate from places and sometimes you're in a place where you know, there aren't too many people of color and you meet someone else. And so she met, you know, this other lady uh, that was also a, a, a living nanny as well. Um, and uh, her, I don't know, she said, but my mom said, you know, the lady said, listen, parents won't eat children, but children will eat their parents. And, you know, I was like, man, that's 
sounds so disgusting. What do that? What does that mean? And you know, and it's it's it's, it's like years later. It's not like she she never elaborated either. And just years later, um, I'm, I've heard that in 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 different cultures said different ways, um, but it's still the same thing. Meaning that, uh, you know, parents will sacrifice, and I, I've met parents that in, in because of some of the schools that I've gone to I've met parents who have literally gone to their beds without eating and and just so their children can eat guess what few children ever think that when they're eating if it's even a sandwich few children will break off that little piece and say here mommy or here daddy you know if it's the parent that's raising them to say here and so that's you know what they were alluding to because children never think of their parent but parents always their concern is always their children so you know we have to thank god for those of us who have children who who do think about us who do say you know what did you eat have you had or you know whatever it is just just picking up on cues, are you okay? You know, or just being kind to you, doing something for you, um, knowing that you're always working hard or you're, you know, you're always busy. And so, you know, setting up that appointment for you to get a manicure or a pedicure or getting you a massage or, you know, maybe going to the spa and having just a whole day doing your hair, your face, your nails, you know, you do have children once they're grown or they're owning, uh, have enough money. And sometimes they don't even have to be grown. There are kids who out of their allowance will do for their parents. So not all kids will eat their parents, but, you know, as, as, as I don't, I don't know. My mom never told me what island uh, the other person came from, but as I said, I've since then heard this saying from all around people all around the world, right? So yeah, it doesn't matter. <laughs> the truth is the truth. So, but as I said before, uh, I do hope and pray that um, there is no enemy within your camp, meaning your flesh, your mind is not working against you. You know, sometimes we can overthink things and that can sometimes be detrimental, but I pray that it's not. I pray that you have insight, that you, um, you know, uh, and especially for those who are uh, Christians, those who believe God, that you you pray, lean not to your own understanding, trust God in everything that you're doing, because he's the one that's going to help to help you to see and to discern, you know, when you need to stop, do not go down the rabbit hole with your thinking, right? Don't follow your thoughts down the rabbit hole um, so that it works against you and become an enemy to you or, you know, having this, the dynamic of being in a household where you're not safe or, you know, just being having friendships or relationships or alliances that are not beneficial on both sides that can be detrimental or can be harmful or painful or hurtful. And wait a minute, I, you know, I saw this this evening and my friend Danette, this is on our page too. And um, I think Debbie, Debbie had this, Debbie, thank you for that quote. Um, but let me just share this with you. Um, uh, it says, accept people as they are, but place them where they belong. I, I, listen, I wasn't thinking about this, but this just came into my thoughts. So this just became a part of this message. Listen, accept people as they are, but place them where they belong. Then it says, you are the CEO of your life. Hire, fire, and promote accordingly. You know, <laughs> I tell you, uh, that just tickled me because seriously, sometimes there are people in your life, you know, and um, I think 
for many of us that we think when we're born into certain families that we're obligated to receive, to be the recipients of hatred, anger, um, unkindness. Yes, that one, unkindness. It is a terrible thing when your own family is unkind to you. But you don't have to accept that from them. Place them where they belong. Uh, yeah, you're my aunt, my cousin, my mom, my dad, my uncle, my sister, my brother, my cousin. But guess what? We might be related by blood, but doesn't mean that we have to stay in the same, especially once you're grown and you have your own life. And it's sad that that happens, but I would say pray for them. Pray that the eyes of their understanding be opened and that they come to acknowledge their shortcomings, acknowledge their meanness, acknowledge their anger, or whatever it is that they're dealing with, because we all have something to deal with. Just pray for them. The thing is, you don't have to put yourself in harm's way. So you don't have to go to their houses or they don't have to come to your houses. You're not obligated. No. Just because you're related by blood. No. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. You can set boundaries. And boundaries are needed to be set. You know, uh, I was recently reading, uh, and, and I, I did a message on heart matters and how, you know, that the Bible says a merry heart do it good as a medicine, but, you know, sad heart rots the bones. And so um, when I was doing some further studies, it talked about how we have to set boundaries. We have to set boundaries about the things that keeps peace in our hearts, right? So set boundaries, set boundaries with family as well. Unfortunately, there are some that boundaries will have to be set. You know, and I know no one likes to hear that, but uh, today, few people like to hear the truth and, um, the truth, however, does set us free. So I pray that you're not in a situation where there's an enemy within. I do pray that for you. And I pray that you'll allow God to protect you, keep you and guide you, and that you'll allow him to lead you in the decisions you make and to open your eyes to truth and to know that you can set boundaries and you don't have to be tolerant of unkind behaviors from anyone. You don't have to be mean and vindictive. You simply have to set boundaries and that you can walk away and stay safe. Well, with that being said, let me just check to see. Uh, I remember last week, Doris was on. Hello, Deaconess Chavez. Let me see if anyone's on today. Not sure, but I'm just going to check and see before I sign off because a lot of times I sign off without oh hi Pastor Shazad how are you a lot of times hold, hold on one second I oh, keep I keep forgetting to yeah uh hi Abita hi Pastor and Mrs. Shazad how are you hello Pakistan um uh what time is it is it morning now it's night here so it's probably morning there or close to morning. Anyway, um, hi guys. So have a wonderful night. And for those where it's night and if it's already tomorrow, have a wonderful tomorrow because some folks are hours ahead of us and know that you're blessed, know that you're loved. God loves all of us so much more than we can ever, ever express or experience with anyone. And in the meantime, let us remember to share love among each other. The love that God has shared with us, may we share that with others. So have a wonderful weekend, everyone, and stay safe. May there be no enemy within 
because the enemy without can do no. All right. Take care.